BTS is a very successful music group that consists of seven members, but beyond more than being known for their music, they're also known for their music videos and their dance routines. I recently spent a week diving into their music, so to understand them a little bit better, I'm going to watch every music video, every movie, a few episodes of Run BTS and BTS Monuments Beyond the Star. Everything else I'm not really going to prioritize because I'm trying to still live my life and it would take even longer to get this video to you, so there's some videos that you think I should watch, but I didn't, and I guess I'm sorry. <laughs> Feel free to inform me of anything that I miss, any storyline, whatever. At the end, I'll choose my top three favorite music videos and let me just remind you that I'm just gonna watch the BTS music videos so I'm not gonna watch any of the solo albums or solo project whatever music videos because I'd rather listen to those albums first and then watch the videos later on but here's everything that I plan on watching my goal is to watch them in release order and I'm not sure right now how I'm gonna watch the movies but basically I'm gonna be hanging out in Bangtan TV for the next week and I'm also separating this into sections that I created on my own this may not be the best way to do it but it's just what I think will work best for me I have a uh, mobile order for Rally. So basically, Taco Bell celebrating Baja Blast 20 years. Crazy. And so they made a uh, gelato out of the Baja Blast. I have no idea what to expect. And um, I don't even like gelato like that, but we're going to see what's going to happen. Thank you. You see? This is one of those moments where you go through the drive through and get your food, and then you just sit in the parking lot and eat it. But I only have time to watch one of their videos, so I just want this first one. Wow. I'm oh, my goodness. All right. That's the taco because I just spilled it everywhere. Anyway, the first music video I'm going to watch is No More Dream. And then we'll start everything after that. So while I'm not going to like watch a video, then say what I'm thinking every single time. Since that was the first one, the main thing I'm thinking the whole time I'm watching is like the little bit of choreo choreography that's in it. It makes me uh, excited, I guess, or it makes me anticipate what to expect um, in the more videos that I watch because the No More Dream video, I think it said it was like 11 years old. I'm just looking forward to all the, the craziness that everybody talks about and see if it remains true or whatever. Also, this gelato was really good. I'm not even gonna lie. So I actually ended up watching the rest of them the next day, but I still got through them. And I even used Dual Set, I, I hope I'm saying that right, to have an even better understanding of the lyrics. My top three videos out of this first section were War of Hormone, Danger, No, and I had Boy in Love as an honorable mention. War of Hormone, to me, it seemed like it was only three different continuous shots. I'm sure it's the video creative side of me, but I just enjoy those things. And for Danger, I was like, okay, footwork <laughs> in the J's too. <laughs> I felt like cutting the hair at the end though was like one of those, something big just happened, so I need to make a drastic change to move on. And lastly, I actually liked the meaning behind the song No, so I thought the video fit with the lyrics, even though I know that's what music videos are for, basically, but I just felt like it was perfect. <laughs> Even though I'm just watching music videos, I thought that it'd be a good idea to switch up the location just to have something different. And it was feeling good outside. By the way, if you've been keeping up with me, then you'll know that I recently broke my foot. It was actually in the last BTS video. But I am proud to say that I can walk in a shoe again. Look at me. I mean, I still can't really run or anything, so there's that. My top three videos from this section were Dope, Fire, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, then Run as an honorable mention. Honestly, Dope had one-shot vibes again and the choreography was on point. Same with Fire, even though at first I thought that this was a stove. Blood, Sweat, and Tears was so different and that video in Run just kind of reminded me of why I, I can appreciate music videos because they add more context than just lyrics for a song. So they have like the mini cut scenes and stuff like that. It was also at this point that I realized that uh, these music videos were all in the Bongtan universe, or at least some of them. And so now I feel like every time I watch a video, I'm just gonna be like, how is this connected to the Bongtan universe? One thing I'll also add is I like the kind of vlog behind the scenes clips during the credits of Run, because it's always great to see people just acting normal. Hey! Sorry, that was kind of abrupt, but I'm letting you know that I've officially started a Patreon and you can see all the info right here. Now you can be a freebie, a general supporter, suggest some ideas, or get to know me even more in a monthly Q&A. Because I'm just being honest, I am a busy guy with a full-time job and a family, but my favorite part is that if you're here or here, you'll be entered into a biannual drawing of a Taco Bell gift card, which is like my way of just giving back to you. And if you haven't noticed, I like Taco Bell and I try to feature them in every single one of my videos. I like to do more than just listen to music if you haven't noticed. So if you want to support me as a creator, join the Patreon, but no pressure to join at all because I'm just thankful that you're here in the first place. So very soon after I started watching the Wings short film and there's a video that has the full story put together with each short film, The Boy Meets Evil, the tour trailer, and the music videos for Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and Spring Day. So I watched the entire thing. As I was watching this short film, I was just having an appreciation for the different film styles. And then it was also just interesting having like little snippets of each song. 
But I will say that I grew a bigger appreciation for the song Stigma. Also, let me just say, shout out J-Hope for killing the dance routine right here. It took me a while to figure out what was going on, but I did do some digging and research on my own. And I figured out that if I read Demian by Herman Hess, then I'd have a better understanding overall. But I know may maybe not everybody's gonna read that. In summary, there's just a lot in general with this entire short film. And I feel like it's one of those things that like, you watch it the first time, you get all this stuff. You watch it the second time, you get something different, and then you just get something different every time you watch it. And because of that, a lot of people have their theories, but I feel like this one made the most sense to me. It's linked in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself. Okay, now every time I watch a video, I'm trying to figure out how it's connected to the previous videos, but at the same time, I feel like not all of the videos are connected in the Bangtan universe. For example, the music video for Come Back Home, well, for starters, I hadn't even heard this song yet, and I thought that it was so different than everything compared to the previous videos. But I still have it as number three out of this section, followed by Fake Love and Mic Drop. I thought Fake Love was a great representation of the song and that album, really. Also, I feel like I'm missing something with the Snickers love. Like, are they sponsored by Snickers or something? Or were they, or do they just love Snickers? And uh, with the Mic Drop video, I mean, come on. That, that video was just great. I mean, I, I have nothing else to say about that one or the rest of these videos really, but overall, I feel like ever since the Wings short film, uh, their music videos have just kind of went up in production level, and I think that's good. Now, I feel like the Love Yourself highlight reel and the Euphoria short film, they're so good that I feel like it's, it's helping me get the bigger picture or fill in the bigger picture. But I will say with the Love Yourself highlight reel, I felt like it was an overall theme of realizing that things happen, but you gotta make sure that you love yourself and be prepared for the worst. With Euphoria, there were so many different theories that all I can say at this point is that I just enjoyed it. Hey, look at that foot, boy. <laughs> Uh, this is how my view was as I was watching these videos. And I ain't gonna lie, having Idol as the first video kind of set the bar high. Like I did feel like I was low key tripping because of the effects and colors and whatnot. As far as my favorites, I'll have to choose Idol as number one, followed by Lights, then Make It Right. I honestly thought Lights was a cool concept of just like showing that you can just be there for each other no matter what, no matter the distance. The Make It Right music video was just so different with the animation and going from that to clips of their concerts, I thought it was just a great change of pace considering the other videos. Outside of those three videos, I will say that it was my first time hearing the song Heartbeat, but then I realized that it was a song for their mobile game, which you can't really get anymore because it's not available. On this particular day, I had to go to my physical therapy appointments and I ended up getting new exercises to do at home. And so I started doing those exercises as I started Burn the Stage. And with this being the first movie that I was gonna watch, I didn't really have any expectations, but I just knew that it was kind of set up like a documentary. The thing I love about this movie, or you can call it a docuseries, I don't know which one came first, but the thing I love is that it gives you an insight to who they are as people outside of like the musical artist, the performer part of them. It just in general shows the real side of doing like multiple shows in a row with the amount of dancing and moving that they do and how it really takes a toll on their bodies. It just helps because it just shows that they're really passionate and that they're dedicated to the music that they create. And I know that a lot of other artists really, you know, are putting in hard work for said music, but I just wish a lot more artists would do or be more open to the behind the scenes of a world tour or nationwide tour, whatever it is. Uh, I wish there was just more of that because then it just makes that artist or group of artists more relatable and just remind you that they are normal people that have everyday struggles just like you. Also, let me just say shout out to the director for making sure that they were happy as individuals because that's very important. As far as the rest of the movies go, I know there's a, a couple that I, I didn't have listed. These were the only ones that I could find free access to. And so I'm just gonna watch those because I still got a lot of stuff to watch. Ooh, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just gonna get straight to it. My top three in that section were Black Swan, On, and Dynamite. I chose Dynamite because it looked like they had fun filming that one. And with On, I ain't gonna lie, that was crazy confusing. But at the same time, I like that it was confusing because it was different. And because of the dance scene that was like right in the middle of the video, I thought that was good. Black Swan was so deep and there are like a million explanations and theories out there. So for that fact alone, it's number one. But of course, with all these theories, I'm like, how does this connect to the Bangtan universe? So I only watch five episodes of Run BTS because honestly, I don't have that much free time like that. I mean, you really think I would try to watch all 155 episodes? That's crazy. I watched the very first episode and then I watched the four most popular episodes on YouTube, which were episodes 97, 24, 85, and 155. I feel like at this point I need to like get on Weverse. I think that's what it's called, Weverse. <laughs> Overall, I would say like Run BTS just kind of just reminds you that they are normal people with normal personalities. And off the top of my head right now, I can't think of any other artist that does something like this. So I think that's really cool that the fans, ARMY has this 
way to view BTS. I would just say just start documenting your life because honestly you won't regret it and I'm sure that all the members of BTS will have these videos to look back on and just reminisce really. I actually had to watch film out twice because I felt like I missed so much the first time that I was just like, what is going on? But I actually have that as my favorite video out of this bunch, followed by Butter and then Permission to Dance. The last two kind of have the same vibe as the Dynamite video, but I personally like the camera movement and Butter better. I do think it's cool that in the Burn the Stage movie, I can't remember who it was, but they were saying that they went to a Coldplay concert. And now look at them just out here making videos with Coldplay at least the hologram versions. <laughs> Even after finishing all of the music videos, I did some more digging to see exactly how each BTS video was connected to the Bangtan universe, mainly to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And there are plenty of sources, but I managed to read this one, which I thought was pretty thorough. But please inform me of anything that I might have missed, overlooked, forgot about, whatever. So I'm on my way to meet someone and I finished the, the Permission to Dance uh, LA tour video, movie, whatever. And I'm just gonna like just spit fire some thoughts that came to mind while I was watching it because I had to gather my, my thoughts and my notes and everything. One of the first things I've realized is when they're doing like a full dance routine with it, just them, the crowd goes crazy. And I could imagine like seeing that in person would just be, I mean, it'd be really cool. I personally like the transition to Black Swan. I think it was from Blood, Sweat and Tears or Black Swan transition into Blood, Sweat and Tears. Either way, the extra dancers, they were performing like showing the wings and everything. And I thought that was cool. Uh, one thing I did think was kind of funny was like RM and maybe Suga uh, doing like the ad libs while they were singing. It makes me feel like they should do a song with Quavo if they haven't already. While they were performing Life Goes On, I thought it was funny that they were like trying to do the whole picture thing on the screen, which I know they did that on the day before because that was the first day of the tour and this was the second one. I think it's funny, like you're in the zone singing and then you're like, woo, picture. I didn't expect to see the one and only Megan Stallion, even though I know she's in the remix of Idol, but I just, for some reason, I didn't expect that. Another thing I thought that was funny, uh, I don't know what song they were performing, but RM, like in the middle of the song, he was like, this song is really tough. <laughs> And I, just, I mean, I, I, I appreciate things like that because it just shows, shows them that like the stuff they're doing is difficult. And I think of other performers and they're doing a bunch of stuff on stage and they're trying to sing their song, remember the lyrics and all that. Hopefully seeing things like that, people can appreciate how much goes into these things. And the last thing I'll say about it is uh, at the end when they were kind of doing their like closing remarks, you can kind of, even though it was only the second night of four, I think you can kind of just tell the emotion that they're like, you can feel the emotion that they were feeling. Uh, after you know performing in front of all these people and going through the whole pandemic era of not really seeing people or performing for people and just doing it in front of camera, you can kind of see their emotion and feel their emotion through their explanations. So I think that was cool. I'm probably gonna get to my destination about 10 to 15 minutes early. So I'm just gonna probably watch some more of the yet to come uh, tour movie or whatever uh, and try to finish that. With yet to come, I'll go ahead and say that I enjoyed that one more than Permission to Dance because going from my city to dope to fire, then Idol, I was just like, they're killing it. <laughs> also, I thought the transition from Butterfly to Uh was like a super hard transition, uh, but I will say that I have a bigger appreciation for the song Run because the way that it was performed live was different than just listening, which is the case for most songs, but I feel like I would enjoy that song a lot. At the end, I was wondering why they were getting all emotional and whatnot, and that's when I realized that this was their last concert before their break. Crazy to think that as of this video, that was almost three years ago. And I also did search for other live performances for songs like Lie, Attack on Bong Tan, and 134340. As expected, after watching the live performances, my top songs kind of shifted around a little bit because the same thing happened when I watched all of Taylor Swift's music videos. But for BTS, I will say that I've been listening to the song on a lot more since seeing that perform live. I figured that if I watched the dance practices after the live performances, then I would see them perform dances for songs that they didn't make music videos for. I basically looked at the dance practices and rehearsals for songs that I thought had a lot of movement, like Fire, Dope, Fake Love, Idol, Dynamite, Run BTS, and Mic Drop. I don't really have a favorite, but the routine for On is up there. I'm personally not in the dancing world, but I did have a cousin that was at one time, and I just know that it takes a lot of practice, a lot of repetition, and I wonder if it's to a point now that like, if you just ask them to do the dance routine for a certain song, if they could just do it on the spot, just because they've done it so many times. While I'm glad that I watched all the music videos, I feel like this docu-series explained so much to me. It was also at this point that I could tell who was who by their faces. I mean, honestly, I'm still working on Jin and Jimin, but I think I got it. But first I wanna say shout out to the chairman, Bong Si Hyuk. I don't know if I said that right, because I felt like he was just always checking in on them as people first and then artists second. And from the first episode explaining how BTS came to be, to RM explaining that fake love was a song full of desperation with acting in masks, to J-Hope explaining the different chapters of BTS, and to even episode seven showing them in their 
their homes and Jin talking about living a normal life. I think I'm just saying that I feel like this docuseries was a perfect recap of everything I've discovered about BTS so far. And it was just so interesting to see them like slowly gain popularity in the K-pop world in South Korea and then eventually tapping into the Western music industry. And I know this is completely random, but I feel like if I genuinely like hung out with one of them, it would be Jungkook and I don't know why. Because I also feel like RM is that dude that would probably have a deep meaningful conversation with you and then J-Hope would bring the energy and then I feel like Suga would be the most chill. I mean, but at the same time, they've all, I'm sure, matured in their own respective ways. Not to say that they aren't chill because I'm sure that all of them are, would be cool to hang out with. But for me, I just felt like in the docuseries, they didn't really give enough screen time to Jimin, Jin, and V. I think the music videos only help explain who BTS is and show their passion and creativity. My favorite music videos are probably Mic Drop, Blood, Sweat and Tears, and Dope, but really I like the complexity of others like Black Swan and Film Out. Yet To Come In Busan was the better movie, even though I know I only watched two of them. And my favorite song performed live was probably Dope, but there were times after I watched everything where I would be singing in my head, Forever, we are young. I can't sing it. And then I'd be thinking to myself, does this mean I'm ARMY now? I know some people may not take the time to watch anything because they probably don't feel like reading captions, but I think it's still worth it even if you only watch BTS Monuments. And as for me, I still plan on listening to their solo albums at some point, but for now, I'm kind of just chilling like the rest of ARMY, just waiting to see what happens next with BTS. Sunday morning fuels quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it, kinda how I feel with you.